Line graphs are another very common graph you might see to describe data. Now a line graph is a little different than what we've been looking at so far because it describes data that comes in pairs. Um, an example of that that is very common would be a time series data. So data that pairs up at a specific point in time. An example that I have here on the slide would be the population of the city of Bend over time. And what we have is on the horizontal axis, we have the year. So notice um, the axis starts at 1900 and goes to 2020. And then on the uh, vertical axis, we have population in thousands. And zero to, it looks like about 100. But remember, that's not zero and then 100 people. That would be 0,000 to 100,000. So uh, 20,000, 40,000, 60,000, 80,000, 100,000 people. Um, so each of these points that we see on the graph, each of these points represents a, 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 a pair of data points. For instance, this last point here um, is at year 2020, and it approximately is about uh, 100, so that would be 100,000 people. So we've got in 2020, the population bin is 100,000. So it's kind of pairs of data. Each one of those, those um, uh, points is actually showing you what year you're at and what the population was in Bend at that time. Now you'll also see on this graph that you have, um, why it's called the line is that it's the, there's a line connecting each one of these data points. The lines connecting are just there to not represent data, the lines connecting the points are just helping us see the pattern in what's happening with the data. It, it, the lines I want to really emphasize are not part of the data. Only the, the points or the dots are part of the data. The lines connecting the points are just um, there to help you see the pattern. All right, so we can answer questions or investigate this, these types of graphs pretty simply as long as we pay attention to what each of the two axes represents and look carefully um, at the, the points based on those two axes. For instance, if we wanted to estimate Ben's population in 1970, we would go to where 1970 is. Now remember the year is on the horizontal axis. So 1970 would be halfway between 1960 and 1980. You don't always have exactly the year that you're working with that will be on the axis, but you can very easily approximate that it's halfway there. And we do have a data point related to that. And then if we wanted to know the population, we're going to look at where that uh, data point is in terms of going across to uh, the vertical axis. So when we look at that, it looks to be between 10 and 20. because And so we're between 10 and 20. And if we go back and look at how far up we are between 10 and 20. It looks like we're a little less than halfway. It can be hard to see when you when you put a horizontal line all the way over, but it looks like we're halfway between those two, two vertical lines. Um, I should say horizontal lines. So I would say maybe a little less than half, so maybe about 14,000 people in 1970. Question two has us go the opposite way. It says estimate when Ben's population went above 60,000 people. So now we're looking at the vertical axis first. 60,000 would re be represented by 60 coming on over. We get to that graph. We're not on one of the data points. We're on a line that connects two data points. We're on a line that's connecting the data point at 2000 and the data point at 2010. So basically we know that somewhere between 2000 and 2010, the population went above 60,000 people. Now we can't tell exactly when. Sometimes um, we, we could approximate if we assume that the growth was linear, which is what the line is showing us would be linear growth. If we assume it's linear, which um, is an approximation, then that would be around 2000 and maybe 
th uh, 3 or 2004. So if we assume linear data or linear growth, 